All right, welcome back. I'm at the bus stop, taking you guys straight to the airport, just to show you guys around what is the money exchange, where do you take the taxi, how do you take the bus. I'm gonna get into more details for today. Let's start today's video. What's up, beauty Welcome back to my channel once again. If you're new here, consider subscribing because I feel that my goal is to bring you the most delicious thinking and enhance your intellect to escape velocity. Let's start today's day. I'm right outside Tegel Airport. Berlin has two airports. One is called Tegel Airport, one is called Schonefeld Airport. This is the airport I came out in 2015 in Germany. The reason I'm here to show you guys where to take the bus from, where to take taxi from and if you have some your local currency where can you exchange it right at the airport so that you can come out and buy local ticket in euros. Before I go ahead and explain you guys about ticket system and transportation system one question which comes to my mind is what can you expect from today's video. I assure you keep watching this video till the last you will know exactly what are the things you're supposed to do within the first month of arrival in Germany whether you're a student or you're coming here for employment. Let's go. There are a total of five terminals on this airport, A, B, C, D, E. Um, I came out from A, B and C on that side, uh, E and D are on that side. Now to explain you a bit more practically, I'm gonna go inside this airport. Now this is not a typical airport what we have in India, wherein there's a lot of high security at the gate itself and they don't allow you to get inside also. So you can come inside and then there are a lot of shops. Um, the boarding area is that side. This is what you see. Now let's go out. This is a place. Raise Bank. This is exactly a place where you're supposed to do your currency exchange. Now in worst case scenario, if you're carrying your local currency, a lot of them, then you can change it here. Of course, um, they don't give you good price, but it can be a, it can be a a great deal for you guys. There are some currency exchange offices in the city but still you can't expect much value out of it. When you come outside you have two options from here. Either you take a bus or you take a taxi. Okay. Now I can totally understand that you're traveling here for your studies so you would not come here with just a backpack. Right? A lot of people they come with a heavy bag like 48 kgs, 48 kgs, two bags and then one bag backpack and one laptop bag so I can totally understand practically it's not feasible for you to carry all these things in bus but uh, if you have enough money then you can uh, take taxi which I'm going to show you once I'm done talking about this part otherwise I'm going to show you where you can buy the tickets for bus first one of the options what you have is you buy the tickets from this uh, machine or there are guys from BVG. BVG is a company who is responsible to run all these bus transportation systems here. You see this guy? This guy. He's a, you can buy a ticket from him or you can also buy a ticket from the driver. So buses are always constantly going to Alexanderplatz and Hauptbahnhof, which is the main station of Berlin. So, ticket to reach Alexanderplatz would cost you 2 euro 20 cents. So, make sure that you're carrying some cash, which I'm about to talk to you guys. It took me 40 minutes, literally, to come this far. Just to show you guys all those things. Bear one thing in mind, uh, what I'm showing you guys, this is the departure point of this airport. Arrival is one floor down. So, something like this. So something like this where people are standing and waiting in the line and uh, taxis are coming in queue. Don't be surprised that when you find Mercedes Benz as a taxi here in Berlin or Germany, it is a very common thing. I'm going to the office, I'm going to film the rest of the video. I tried outside, it's way too noisy and I want you guys to concentrate on the information what I'm sharing with you. So yeah, I'll see you directly in the office now. Alright guys, so before I begin, I want to put out a disclaimer that the informations or the processes which I'll be sharing with you guys is tried and true. It's my experience. So it may totally relate or it may totally differ from person to person, city to city, environment, what they're living in, etc. Other conditions around that. Alright, having said that, uh, let's begin. 
So I'm presuming that you're gonna do two important things before you come to this country. Following, number one is get a currency exchanged before you come because you can't get it done here. Even if you get it done, what I showed you at that Rise Bank, you will pay earth shattering amount to them and you're gonna get peanut in return after the conversion. Second thing which I'm presuming is that you have already taken care of your accommodation, whether it is short term, long term, whichever place you have booked, you at least have a place to stay and you don't go homeless. All right, whether it is hostel, accommodation, Airbnb or any any accommodation provider. Now, when you look at this paper, you would not understand. Uh, I would not dig in deep now. I'm going to get back to this once I've done explaining all the six activities which you're supposed to do. So to begin with, first point is accommodation. Hands down, I can tell you it is so difficult to get accommodation than to get an admission in German University. It's very, very difficult to get accommodation. The point is there is a high level of demand but less supply in this city, especially I'm talking about Berlin. I don't know how it is in Hamburg, Munich or all the other places, but I'm I'm guessing it. it's almost the same situation like that. If you go to Munich, as far as I know, I have some friends studying there. Accommodation prices are very, very high. So get your accommodation sorted out before you come to this country. Otherwise, you're going to have a real like you're going to face this close of financial repercussions. Every month you will have to pay more than the average accommodation price. So that may vary from 400 to 500. I've seen some people right here in this city paying 800 euros for an Airbnb. Think wisely. Choose every platform to communicate with people as much as you can. And I've made points. So I'm presuming, as I said, that you already have accommodation. Whereas I showed you that you came out of the airport, took the taxi or a bus, reached your destination where your accommodation is. First thing, you have to collect the key. Okay? If you're coming on weekdays, that means the office is going to be open. You can directly get into office, fill out a few papers, you will get a key. But otherwise, if you're coming on weekend, make sure that while you're in your own country, for example, you're in India, call them up okay call them up that if it's friday and you're arriving on saturday or sunday make sure that you call them up and ask them where's the key gonna be i'm arriving at 12 a.m in the night or 3 a.m in the night or whenever and whatever time key collection is very important that's how you will be able to get inside your building or apartment for example it's monday you go to office make sure that you have a contract signed a physical copy in your hand it is very important i'm going to tell you why third thing what is really important can be helpful for you in future is try to find who is the student representative of that accommodation there is always someone so make sure that you have good friends with them you because you never know what kind of help you might need from them fourth point is pretty straightforward once you have settled down in that house make some friends who are, get to know your neighbors it's always good to uh, have good friends when you come back home so you're gonna have different set of friends at different places when you go to university you're gonna have different people when you come come back home you're gonna have different people try to gel up well with people fifth super important point is here in germany everything works with a mail which is letter okay on your mail box you should put your name make a sticker out of it put write your name and put it on the mail box that is all from accommodation second point is kind of important which i want to highlight in front of you is the university part now for example this is a new country for you fresh monday morning at nine o'clock you're supposed to reach at this university where you're supposed to go and study from accommodation to university you will have to buy a ticket so you need money there okay so keep that uh, in mind that you're supposed to carry some cash when you're traveling from your country to germany points under this are the very first thing which you're supposed to do on day one in university and it is really important it will be also written in your contract while you got selected in your own country it will be written on the contract that you are supposed to come and do the enrollment at this and this date okay if you don't then your contract might get cancelled as a student Otherwise, you can always keep in touch with administration uh, that, hey, my visa is getting delayed. You know, can we just move on the dates? As long as you're able to communicate with the administration and you, then that's fine. So getting back to the point, you're supposed to do enrollment. OK, enrollment means filling out a few forms and make sure that you have all your original documents with you when you're coming to this country. 
so that's what they will just cross verify it uh, you sign a few papers and um, you'll be part of officially you'll be part of university second thing what they're going to give you is semester ticket now semester ticket what it does is it is also an id card as a that i study in this college but at the same time it also act as a pass for you to travel in bus train tram or metro in in fact here in berlin my semester ticket also allows me to go on ferry so that is super important that's where you're going to save money because you don't have to buy tickets randomly and everywhere wherever you go yeah third point uh, make friends as i said so make sure you've made this is my experience make sure that you have you make good set of friends in university because ultimately that's your purpose of visiting this country right so you hang out with smart people and people who can do uh, presentations with you people who, who are good at group uh, studies and all that so make sure that you apply all your senses while selecting and talking to your friends third important thing which you're supposed to do as soon as within the first seven days by law is register yourself at the nearest Rathaus or Buga Armed. Basically, you have to do city registration. Now, to make it very simple for you guys, in Germany, any city you live in, there is always a municipality. You know, likewise, we have in India, uh, there's always a municipality where you have to go with your contract where you're staying, the physical copy, what I mentioned, your passport as a part of id and go to this office points under that is take appointment there in different cities in there are a lot of burger armed in one city it's not just one office and that's where everybody goes there every district has their own so select your district or you can go to other district also and get this thing done i've done the same thing that's what i'm that's my experience that's why and meldung is called city registration by law in this country as soon as you come you have seven days to register yourself for and meldung take your house contract visa plus passport i mean visa is going to be in the passport so you take uh, take the passport now the other side is it's good for you to know so you came to this city of berlin you have to go and do city registration slash unmeldung all right now you got an internship you leaving berlin completely and going to munich then you have to up meldung which is deregister yourself reach to munich and unmeldung again that's how it works here bureaucracy is everything here everything has a rules and regulations which you need to follow i can tell you 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 can't escape anything here so the fourth important thing which you're supposed to do once you have done city registration is you're supposed to go to deutsche bank now, if you remember, before you came to Germany, you deposited 8,640. I think yes, the amount has gone high, but you deposited this money for your own expense, right? So it is blocked now. That's why you're supposed to go to Deutsche Bank and unblock that. Okay. Deutsche Bank slash Kotak Mahindra. So you can, in India, there's also a possibility that people open Kotak, uh, blocked account using Kotak Mahindra. Um, points under this is for example you have got your accommodation you have done your city registration now you go to Deutsche Bank nearest Deutsche Bank with your house contract the physical piece of paper as I said and Meldung the city registration paper which you have got okay and your passport and your blocked account papers which you have received in India when you have opened that or when you initiated the process take this four documents and they will unblock your account once you provide them all these four documents they will unblock your account not immediately the way it happens is first thing um, at your house they're going to send you a debit card in a letter form okay once you've received after a few days you're going to receive password again in the letter box that's the reason you should carry money at least for one or two months because you there, if there's a high uncertainty uh, I don't expect that you already have accommodation so when you don't have accommodation you can't do uh, and melding which is city registration when you have when you don't have city registration bank will not unblock your account so that's why accommodation is so important now the fifth part is super important okay this is again by law needed to every 
person in Germany, irrespective of whether you're German or other nationality, you need a health insurance. Very straightforward. See if your college is helping you with this. Otherwise, you can always go for AOK -okay public uh, health insurance. My recommendation is try to go for public uh, health insurance because when you want to have a part time job or you want to have uh, uh, mini jobs anywhere, they would probably ask you for public uh, health insurance. So decide what insurance. I use AOK. -okay. People use TK Max also and there are a lot of them. I'm going to link the video in the description. I showed you guys how to have a health insurance in Germany. For example, you decided to go for AOK. -okay. So go to their office with your student ID card, Anmeldung, again city registration paper and they will you'll have to fill out a form uh, it's called SEPA here in Germany which is uh, automated deduction by the end of the month so you don't have to pay every month they will deduct it automatically same goes for accommodation sixth part which you're supposed to do is getting yourself settled now getting yourself settled has multiple points you have covered all your basics which is your accommodation you have opened your blocked account um, you have done all the paperwork which is necessary just an extra information on this part of the sixth part important apps you should have on your phone is Google map Google translator BVG now this is what I like about Germany and that's why it is developed country is in Germany um, there is a predictability life is like that you know life can be predicted here which is if I tell my friend that hey let's meet at four o'clock that means I will meet the person at four o'clock reason being is because the whole infrastructure is built in a way that um, you have an application you get into the app okay put your current location and put your desired location and there's also an option where you can change the timings and all but if it's happening in real time then just do the search and then you'll get all the possible connections it'll give you several options at several different times that's why we, you should have this local app which everybody uses so in in berlin there's an app called bvg the other app uh, what i would uh, recommend you is to have a babel which is to language learning app wi-fi finder not everyone can afford um, internet outside so like me like i don't have a uh, internet outside so i always use this app which is wi-fi finder it helps me to locate where's the nearest wi-fi and then i go and use it even bright app which is uh, which is again you know i don't know why i keep promoting their app but i'm really i'm really big fan of this app and it has done greatest things to my life so i would recommend you guys uh, having an app for meetup is also uh, you know who doesn't like to meet new people now on the side what is also important is to have a sim card of course right um, i've also made a video about this i'm going to link it in the description once you have settled down in that apartment uh, go to nearest uh, supermarket i've also made a video about supermarket check the video in the description just to get to know which supermarket what brand uh, you know gives at what price and all that it's in the description um, if your apartment doesn't have a utensils then you can either go to Woolworths or you can go to Ikea now all in all everything is done this is what you're supposed to do now at the bottom I've written something take appointment in foreign office for visa extension that's happening in next three months okay because when you enter the country if you see it carefully you're only gonna get visa for three months okay you're not gonna get visa for straight two years for the whole duration of your studies if it's for masters then you have to settle down here get all your paperwork done register yourself in university once you are done then you have to take an appointment in foreign office which is also called as Oslander Behoda okay uh, go to foreign office with all the paperwork then they will extend your visa for long term alright guys so that's all from my side and going back to this paper where I began my talk with how important accommodation is that's why my recommendation is have 1000 to 1500 euros in your pocket as a cash or a forex card or a credit card any sort of method which you can pay at supermarket when your blocked account is still not unblocked see this is why I was saying that how important it is to have accommodation in this country if you can't have no accommodation no in Melbourne, which is no city registration and you can't do that if you don't have this then you can't even go to bank to unblock your account and if you can't go to when you can't unblock then that means you need money to pay for hostels if you're staying in a hostel for food for insurance before I end this video, I want to put out one last thing is that plan your timeline for admissions, for blocked account, for visas, everything 
in a very well strategic manner okay have a very clear idea of what are you going to do in what month and a day i hope you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button okay i would really appreciate it and uh, please go ahead and share it on your timeline also probably someone might be helpful all right guys peace out for now